This is day two and you can see it's a lot busier than it was yesterday, even though there's less, less snow. Uh, wind forecast is 25 to 30 ish on the summit. This cloud isn't forecast, so we think that might be disappearing. Um, and a lot less snow, you can see the rate the water's going through. Skiing in the Cairngorms. Hopefully, we're going to get to Cairngorms summit today. Cool, so how far to the junction? From here? From here, how far to the junction? How long is it going to take us? These kids. Falling on flight mode. Put them inside pocket. Sorry, don't worry. Without getting me scale out, an estimate is between five and six hundred meters. Look over guesstimates for now. What do you reckon? Uh, I thought it looked like four to me. Two from here to that junction there. Yeah, four. That's it. See if you can pace it. I don't know. Have a wonder. Let's go to that junction and then. Right. Nice, nice chill day, no pressure yet. Or snow. Ah, oh, we'll find some of that. <laughs> so, we've uh, just pulled up at a junction and uh, measured how far it is to the, uh, the next part that we're looking for. And we've measured it to about 1400 metres. Um, so then there's a calculation you can do based on your average walking pace, which I've got to learn. Um, these two guys have got it dialed in, but as the week goes on, I'll, uh, I'll learn my own uh, pacing. So 21 minutes and we should be around the target. And that's how we're working at the minute. Avalanche is risk is low. The only way to be any low is no snow. Can you see, follow the crag in from Fecal Ridge, and right in the centre there's an obvious gully <coughs> that does that, narrows and then widens. Yep. Clouds just going over it. Yep. That's the vent. Now when it clears, look at the size of the cornices in the top of there. Oh yeah. For them to stand out here, they're massive. So, you know, I showed you that... By, that, by cornice, do you mean that really huge chunk of, like, that white? Really it's like a chuck stone. Chunk of all the hanging snow. At the top, where there's a lip. Right yeah. at the top. So there's a little cliff of rock, and then it plateaus out, and that, that plateau itself is the... It looks like South Africa. Yeah, go up the gully. You've got the big, solid buttress on the left. Yeah. All right, and it, the gully to the right of it. Follow the gully, and then, yes, got you. The snow looks like yeah. South Africa, got you. All right, um, yeah, so that, can you remember I showed you the picture of the huge cornices yesterday, me and a fella called Col? Yeah. That was in there. All right. So, they're not as big as them, but, but to be able to see that here, and they're obviously slumping as well, and getting saturated, Yeah. It, it's concerned. So, people might be going, oh, we're going to go do a nice gully. Now, that's notorious for build up of corners. And we were talking yesterday, well, we've been constantly talking about BAA, yeah. And your terrain, your terrain choice. If you go into that gully, you have got nowhere to go. As yeah. soon as you get to the base of that, you're in the firing line for the whole time it takes you. And if it goes off, all that a massive amount of snow is going to funnel into a narrower space, which is going to probably end up like burying you. We say that doesn't happen often. But yeah, the terrain. But then they've run out as well at the base of that gully. So you've got the triangle at the bottom of the gully. Okay. It's taking you straight down, straight over that craggy bit below it. 
and this slab on the left hand side is called the Great Slab which is really famous for avalanching right. <laughs> right. Like, I'm just stacking this winter thing it's like everything peaks on about his death right. that great I'll build snowmen and do snow angels that's what yeah, I'm about it. so that Great Slab avalanches Okay. now if you're on that and that goes the chances are you're getting buried it's going to smash through the ice in the locker and you're going to be drowning so that's that is but that is a the areas I'm pointing out to you are like why do people known do it for but this is these areas are known because that's the classic angle to go it warms up a bit the water starts running on the rock below the snow lubricates it poof off right um, so but it's a really good idea now we don't get loads that size that's a massive slab the great slab but it gives you an idea if you're walking in and looking at something that's it's like them two similar. people that are there at the bottom of it there but it's there's not enough on it really to do is there not on the great slab um but you know it's very important is at the top there well the, it looks as though there's some people heading up the gully <coughs> yeah there is there's, uh, the, people heading up there's a gully there. up there which i again that was one i chose not to do on a on a, a melting day but the, will they have cornices at the top of that gully as well if well, well that, that we'll looks like a massive there. one up there that looks exactly the same it won't be yeah. as big as the ones in the vent, but, so, for all we know, they might not be going to do a gully, they yeah. might be walking in. So if I was going into here, I would go up that gully there that they're on, because that looks fine at the moment, with the condition we know. Then I would scoot into this buttress, and I'd do something that climbs the buttresses and tops out on the rock. Then I'm avoiding the corners. Mm. There could be that consolidated, the solid, but with the thaw, my head's going a lot of water mm. underneath yeah. it so I wouldn't be going up the vent but we could get there and they could be absolutely solid and they've got steps chopped through but right. these are all things to consider now if you don't know it's solid do you put yourself in that position probably not a good idea is it what, what's your thoughts about this four party then walking across the top I mean that's that doesn't look like it's much of an avalanche risk where they are they're about maybe a meter or two into into the snow yeah, they're just walking across in the snow. That looks fine. That's that's less than 20 degrees where they are. Right, OK. Um, and I reckon they're just walking straight across the snow to go up the bike. The actual heathery bit or the grass right next to the yeah. sort of heather and make their way up. Um, because they've come in across, haven't they? I've not seen them go up. Um, can you see here what I meant about the snow's whiter? Yeah. So you can really see it now compared to that, to that bit there. There's like that patch. And the, the lighter stuff's the stuff that's freshly laid. Yeah. Right, okay. That the wind's deposited. So by whiter you literally mean the actual whiteness of it. Yes. Right, not the depth of it, the whiteness. No, no, how, the, how white it is. So the whiter you, it is, the fresher it is. Yeah, so if you look over here on the left hand side of the crag, it looks like a almost a whitey blue. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Now come over to the bit I was referring to when we were walking yeah. in. It's like a Daz white, it's much yeah, brighter, yeah, yeah. and that's what's been picked up and deposited. So that's the height yesterday, 900 metres, so the 900 metre contour line runs across the base of there, so you're well into it, uh, where it was saying it was moderate, it had bands of moderate going through it, and that's it. So looking at that, I do think you could pick quite a safe line through it because of the terrain, because there's iron for safety and things, but it'd be interesting to see from the top. Right, okay. Rock against the rope and then it created more. He's putting a right angle in it. Right, so then you go nice and quick, quite good for winter, especially up here when it's normally and you're like just on your mate, hurry the frick up, like we need, I need to get out of here. Um, yeah. Can he hear their instructions down there or is he feeling the weight? Not a chance. Not a chance. No. 
Um, what have you done? How close to that um, big chunk of uh, potential avalanche are we? Uh, I think it's just around the corner, isn't it? The corner. Yeah, well, weren't we looking at either one of these gullies and saying, oh, there's some there as well? Yeah, I'm not going to be any closer without crampons on, I don't think. Pete came up to have a little look. I think he was looking to see whether we can see it. Yeah, I want to get them about 10 metres from the back way because I'm a bit of a girl. I've still got my ice axe out because I'm also... Yeah, no, um, yeah, I think it's, the thing is, there's a stability. Has he got a death wish? What's up with him? He's just got married. Jesus Christ, man. East, yeah. I was. I didn't know whether it was the wind that had done that, or the fact that some of it had fallen away. But I suppose if some had gone, then probably all of it had followed it, wouldn't it? Is that you having a go at me coming out in not a snowy condition? Well, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually either whited out or horrendous gales and all we've got at the minute oh, back of my jacket you can maybe see that a little bit of drizzle uh, this particular slope I'm walking down it's got a lot of deepish powder and then every now and again there's a sneaky bit of surprise ice um, you can see the distance that's sort of taking place between my colleagues and myself the, the major reason for that is they've done a lot more in the winter um, they're wearing probably b2 grade boots which are a lot stiffer so they can kick in uh, steps as they're going and uh, my you know winter hiking boots which i suppose is the best way to term them are not really cut out for this um, but I don't have the skill to use them as you probably would do if you're a bit more experienced than I but that's what I'm learning I've not fallen over so it could be a lot worse couldn't it so this ascent that's in front of me is uh, the one that's taken us up onto the Cairngorm and uh, that's the reason they named the place apparently and that's where we're heading this way that's the the way back down and we're about 20 minutes away from the uh, ski lodge um, and this is the start of our ascent to uh, Cairngorm which is at, uh, at its tallest I think it's 1245 meters It wasn't iced, that bit was just cool, so we'll be able to move. Hopefully. 
lovely. Right, this is us getting out of town. Now the wind's picked up a bit. Um, there's no hail, there's no snow. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to make a judgment call on. tomorrow's activities are going to be um, it's looking like we're going to be practicing the ml summer ml and uh, an introduction into some of the winter ml rope work and we're actually dropping off here as I'll just bring you down there was where we were doing the ice axe arrest yesterday and then we're just going to walk back to the lodge and hopefully be able to get a cup of coffee before they shut the door Snow Lodge. Right, so I've got to uh, use my bum as a slad. And I've got different pants on than yesterday. Apparently these paramours go like hell. So as a mark of respect, I'm waiting until the good lady is finished. She's not got as good a pants for uh, sliding on by the looks of it and then we'll have a wee bit of fun and I use the word we as a mark of courtesy and respect for the Scottish uh, the Scottish community now oh, we've all stopped right I'm not going to go then That went horribly wrong. Um, technical problems, union meeting, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, you know, it. I lived. We're we not going any further. Gonna steepen up, so just go really slowly. Yeah, that's not an option in these pants. Shall I go first? Yeah. System works. Got to keep all your axe, lad. Like that. She fights. She does not want to be slid on. Get in. Beast. <laughs> 